Hey everyone, welcome to another Avid tutorial. And this is about moving projects out of Avid. If you're finished with your creative edit and you're going to be doing your color grading and sound design in other programs, how to move things between there. I already have a longer version of this tutorial that goes through all the possible pitfalls, all the settings and detail and rationale. And so you can watch that if you've never done this before, but if you're just looking for a quick refresher and reminder of how to go through the process, this is just a quick breeze through the whole process, assuming you basically know what we're trying to do. So I've got my sequence edited here in Avid. This is just some demo stuff I had lying around that I've thrown together here, but you can see it's got some cuts in the video and several different audio tracks. And I actually have down here a stereo audio track and some mono tracks so we can see how those come through. I'm gonna set an in and out point because I'm just paranoid and like to do that. I'll go file, output, export to file. And I'm gonna export a couple of different files. First one I'm gonna do is an AAF for Pro Tools and I'll show you the options here. I'm using my AAF format, using the marks and selected tracks. And I've turned off video, just exporting the audio. I do want to split my tracks out to mono, so that stereo track gets split. I'm going to do consolidate media with handles, however long you like those. I like pretty long handles, 10 seconds on each side. Sample rate and bit depth, your mileage may vary with whatever your project is and what your audio person in Pro Tools wants, but I'm going with 4824, which is what this project is, and that's what I'll work with in Pro Tools as well. And then I'm just going to embed all the audio in the AF, so we just end up with one file. So I'm going to save this. Move project demo for Pro Tools. Okay, and then you can see here it is on my desktop. And you also see in my bin here, it's created some additional files, additional copy of that sequence in here. I can move those to a different bin or do whatever I want with them. Okay, so I've got that for Pro Tools. Then I'm also going to export something for Resolve. So I'm going to go again, export to file. And I'm going to do an AEF again. This time I'm going to do the video tracks and not the audio. And also in this case, I'm just going to link to the media. So I don't want to mix it down to one file, obviously. I don't want to copy or consolidate because I'm going to actually end up just relinking to my original file. So I'm just going to do this. This is going to be a very small file with no media in it. And I actually didn't have a preset for this, so I'll just say AF Resolve as a new preset. Okay, and that's done. And you can see I now have that here. And if we look over at the file size, you can see this one for Pro Tools is larger. It's still very small because it's a short sequence, but it's about 30 megs. It's got that audio media embedded inside it. The one for Resolve is less than a megabyte. It's just the information about how to cut together the sequence. Okay, then I'm going to export one last thing, which is a reference. So I'm going to export a QuickTime video. I'll create a new set of settings here. I'm using an MOV. Again, I'll use my marks, include all these tracks. And I'm going to go with DNX HD, lowest bandwidth version. This doesn't need to be super high resolution. This isn't a final copy of anything I'm using. This is just going to be a reference to make sure that my video matches up with my audio correctly. I'll set that to keep it legal range. Let's call this time reference video for Pro Tools. Okay, and then also down here, I want to make sure my audio is checked. I've got this PCM stereo, and even though I've been working at 24-bit, I'm going to set this to 16 just because sometimes QuickTime on my computer does some weird stuff. If I'm set at 24, it won't play things, so I'm going to leave this at 16, and we'll reconvert it in Pro Tools. And I'm not going to end up using this audio anyway. This is just a reference, so I don't really care. Okay, I'll export that. And I did it in that DNX HD codec, because I know that's going to work well with Pro Tools. It's going to be frame accurate and keep everything synced up. Okay, so now I've got all my exports out of Avid. I have these two AAFs, one with the audio, one with the video, and then I have a QuickTime video. So now I'll go into Resolve, and this is where I would be doing, let's say, my color grading. So I'll go File, Import, Timeline. I'm going to select that AAF file I made. And you can see the longer tutorial for more info on all of these, but what I do want to do is check this link to source camera files to link back to the original media. This is particularly important if in Avid I was working with transcoded files that might be lower resolution for my creative edit. I want to get back to the original master files for my color grade. So I'll hit OK, and you'll see it's recreated my sequence here. It has all the cuts, all the original shots, and it automatically brought that media in. You'll notice there's no audio because I did not export audio in this AAF file. Okay, so now I'm set here, and I can do my color grade. Meanwhile, over in Audio World, I'm going to open up Pro Tools, and I'm going to do File Open Session, and I'm going to point it to that AF file that I made, the one with the audio. And I'm telling it to open this up as a session. It'll ask me for settings here, and I'm just going to leave these settings, which are the same as what I exported, 24-bit, 48K. Ask where I want to put it. I'll just put that on the desktop so I can find it later to delete it. Okay, and then it's going to show me all the tracks that were in there. Now. 
If I look back at my Avid sequence, you'll see there's only five tracks, but one of them is stereo. So in Pro Tools, it can bring that into six mono tracks. Remember I said to break out tracks to mono. I have these options over here, and I go through the details on that in the longer tutorial. But I'm just going to put all these to new track, bring them in, OK? And there's my session. And you can see how the audio is edited and matches up with how this was edited. Then what I'm going to do is go File, Import, Video. I'm going to find that video that I exported out of Avid, open that. Put it session start. I do want to check import audio from file. Okay, and now you can see it has my video. It's exactly the right length of the session. And then I also have this reference audio track here. Now I'm going to mute this because I don't actually want to hear it. This is the mix down of all the tracks in Avid. It's all of this stuff kind of mixed however I had it in Avid. But the nice thing about this is now I have a reference. So if something in my AF went wrong or I accidentally moved something or whatever, and I'm playing this and something doesn't sound right, I'm like, is that really what they wanted? I could always unmute this track and listen to it and hear exactly what it sounded like in Avid and make sure that the way that it was edited there is what came through here. And like, oh yeah, they did want that weird sound there. That was part of the original edit. Okay. Or I could say like, oh no, that wasn't it. I screwed something up. But normally I'm just going to leave this muted and I'll probably just hide it. Now I've got my video, all my audio, and I can do my work here. So. Let's just pretend I did some simple mixing here. And let's just pretend that that was it and my soundtrack is finished. Obviously, it's not. This is just the demo. And so now what I have is my finished sound mix here. I have my color graded finished video here. And what I want to do is just marry those together. So I'm going to select my video file down here, which has the advantage of I know it's exactly the length of the video. It's the whole thing. I'll go File, Bounce Mix. Make sure all my settings here are correct for whatever I was trying to do. I'll call this Finish Sound Mix. Okay, and now in my Bounce Files folder, here's my Finish Sound Mix. I'll go back into Resolve, and I'm going to bring in that Finish Sound Mix. I'll lay that here, which is exactly the length of the video, because this is the same video that I had here in Pro Tools. It's just this was that down mix from Avid, and this is all the original files added together. But now I have my color graded video, I have my finished sound mix all together in one sequence, and then I'm ready to go to the Deliver tab and export whatever versions of this I need. I am not going to go back to Avid. I'm just finishing here in Resolve and doing my final exports out of there. So that's a quick overview of the process. Hope that was helpful to you. And again, if you need more detail, you can see the longer video. Thanks, and see you next time.